very much, and thanks for asking me to talk, and thank you everybody for coming. It's funny, even though the eye's only little, in, a, in an hour or so, I can't talk about the entire eye, so I'm only going to talk about retinal surgery, and uh, some of the things that we're doing, and the new developments that have happened. Um, <laughs> I remember when I was, I think I was in medical school, and I saw somewhere a, a textbook on the cornea, and I thought to myself, how could you possibly write a whole book on the cornea? And now, now I understand the degree of detail that people go into these various structures of the eye, but I didn't. Um, it's amazing the changes that have happened in retinal surgery in the last uh, 10 years in particular. Um, I've been in practice now for about 20 years, and uh, there's not a week that passes where several conditions uh, come in that we can repair very successfully that when I started in practice we couldn't. And obviously I'm not that up to date with um, other fields, but I don't think most fields can make as startling claims as we can in retinal surgery. And, and I'll go through a lot of these conditions here, but it's, it's really quite remarkable the technological advances that have happened that have allowed us to uh, really change dramatically how we can uh, provide care for patients. First of all, I want to talk about vitrectomy surgery. Uh, modern vitrectomy surgery basically allows us to safely remove the vitreous jelly and then replace it volume for volume, either with salt solution, air, gas, or different types of oils. And the main indications for vitrectomy, and we'll go through all these, are diabetes, various complicated retinal detachments, foreign bodies, when a piece of metal usually goes into the eye, or when someone has had a cataract operation that hasn't gone well, and the complications are, are referred then to a retinal surgeon. And this is a picture of the eye, um, just in cross-section, and the eye is really very much like a camera. The retina is like the film of the camera that lines the inside of the eye. The whole cavity of the eye is filled with this jelly called vitreous, and then in the front of the eye is the lens. It's the lens, when it gets cloudy, that's called the cataract. The important thing to realize, though, is this vitreous isn't just like jello. It's not just this blob of stuff that's sitting in there that's not attached to things. It's, it's, it's gelatinous-like in structure, but it's got various um, uh, fibrils running through it, and it's very adherent to the retina. So you can't just suck the vitreous out, because if you suck the vitreous out, you'll pull on the retina, and tear the retina and create damage to the retina. So when we do vitrectomy, meaning that we put little instruments into the eye to cut the vitreous out, it's a little instrument that has a little tiny hole in it that sucks a tiny little bit of vitreous out in, and then it immediately cuts it off, sucks a little more vitreous, immediately cuts it off, sucks a little more, immediately cuts it off, so as to not impart any traction on the retina. So you, we can cut out this vitreous jelly without tugging on the retina and, and therefore not damaging the retina. And then whatever we cut out of the vitreous, volume for volume, it's replaced. We have little uh, tubes that are hooked into the eye so that with, when we suck out vitreous jelly, it's immediately replaced. So the eye never sort of collapses or gets soft while we're doing the surgery. Now, I will be showing a few videos that are kind of explicit, so if someone doesn't like looking at it, you're going to have to close your eyes and turn away. Uh, I was going to edit them a little bit, and my wife convinced me that I shouldn't, that I should show what we do. So if, if uh, maybe I'll have to express apologies to my wife. So vitrectomy surgery is done with the surgeon sitting. We do it through the microscope. That's the patient covered up, and the eye is uncovered, obviously. And this is the instrument that runs the machine. This is the little hand piece that we stick into the eye. But this uh, instrument, which is all computer um, controlled, basically controls how this machine works. This is where the little bit of vitreous jelly will be sucked into the tip, immediately cut off and then sucked out through a tube. And then another tube, which we'll see in a little bit, is hooked into the eye, which then runs fluid in. The same, same machine uh, not only controls this uh, little vitrectomy cutting tip, but it also controls the light that we use to illuminate the eye from within. It controls the laser that we use when we're operating. It controls various scissors and other instruments that 
are put in for various aspects of the operation. So this is just one of many cases where, for what we do vitrectomy, the entire cavity of the eye is filled with old blood. And this, you can see that vitreous cutter inside, cutting out this congealed, dense white blood. Not surprisingly, if your eyeball is completely filled with this cloudy material, you can't see anything. And the surgery very successfully is able to clear it out. And as we're slowly clearing it out, you can start seeing retina underneath. And uh, this view is all obtained through the microscope. And now, as that blood is all cleared out, you can actually start seeing retina. You can see some normal red vessels in the retina. That's a big blob of blood underneath the retina, which is uh, from an abnormality that uh, the patient bled, and then that blood broke through into the cavity of the eye. So the surgeon was able to successfully remove the blood. Now here's one of these gruesome videos. This is an, a foreign body. Somebody got a piece of metal. They were hammering metal on metal, and this piece of metal like a little bullet went into the eye, and that's the entry site. That's where it entered into their eye. And um, you'll see that first, this little entry site has to be sutured up. And then we're going to sewing this lens system on that will allow us with the microscope to look into the eye, because with a normal microscope, you can only see the surface structures of the eye, the, the cornea and the, the lens at the front. But with a, various, a variety of uh, lens systems, we can then look into the vitreous. So the first thing in this situation one has to do is, because this metal went through the front of the eye, it caused a cataract. So with an ultrasound probe now, um, the cataract will be taken out. And I'm sorry for these videos, but I thought it was important. At least I should say my wife thought it was important that I show <laughs> how the ultrasound is into the eye. <laughs> so this ultrasonic probe is going in, and it's First, taking out the cataract. Once the cataract is out, um, we'll see different lens systems being placed onto the eye, which will then allow us to uh, look deeper. Again, there's a lot of blood that entered the eye when this foreign body entered the eye. And in a few moments, we'll see this piece of metal that's lodged inside the retina. It looks like a little metal arrowhead. <coughs> Under the microscope, it'll look quite big. In reality, it's, it's little. And uh, once we find this thing, it'll be taken out with a little magnet and forceps. In a sec, this piece of metal should come into view. <coughs> happen. It's always a story of someone hammering metal on metal without goggles on and something just flakes off and gets into their eyes. That blood and that white area is an area where the piece of metal actually hit the retina and created a tear in the retina. So that's going to need to be sealed with a laser so it doesn't allow a retinal detachment to happen. magnet going in, and you'll see it grab the piece of metallic form body in there. It'll just jump to the magnet. There. That's the form body. And then when we turn the light on, you'll see it'll be transferred to a, a forceps, which will allow me to take it out of the eye. That's the form body there. Forceps have little flakes of diamond on them that give them very good grip and allow them to take it out. <coughs> and then the laser is being applied around that penetration site in the retina to seal it to uh, prevent a retinal detachment because otherwise if you let a hole like that remain in the retina, 